Welcome back. It's the Out for Smokes podcast. Right up top, I just want to say thank you to everybody who watched the special, who commented, who donated. Uh, it really means a lot. Thank you very much. I feel like the richest boy in the world. And if you haven't seen it yet, my special is up on YouTube right now. It's called Mike Racine, I'm Normal, and I hope you enjoy. How are you boys doing? Oh, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I oh, thought it thanks. was amazing. I, you know, you get nervous for your friends, no matter how much you like their stuff. You don't yeah. want anybody to. Yeah. You don't want to go, hey, buddy, check this out, and then people check it out and they go, oh, I hated it. Yeah. Uh, Johnny's I, really gonna eat Chipotle in front of us. <laughs> He's got that's such a good looking burrito bowl. Yeah, it smells good too. <laughs> what we're supposed to do a show now? I mean, I just ate dinner before I came here, but mm. what you end up eating? What I have, I made like two pounds of chili on Sunday, so we've been eating that all week, and it's great. Dinner is ready in 10 minutes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Today I made some rice, so it was ready in like 20 minutes, but I just, you just throw the chili in, and you go, this is what we're having. We're having our little bowl. We're having our little bowl for dinner, and that's it. I'm not cooking, so I'm trying to do more of that. I'm trying to do more meal prep stuff. That's very good. Today's episode is all about meal prep. Hmm. I checked uh, Mike's <laughs> special. It's at 87,000 views, so we're almost at 100K. It's pretty good, right? Pretty good, yeah. For five fantastic. days. Yeah, I, I have had people call me and go, damn, that was so good. Oh. He was killing so hard. He looked so happy. The crowd was so happy. The crowd was very like good at that early show. You guys were at the early it. show, right? I went yeah. to the late show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The late show um, was a little tough. Yeah, I was in the you know I was in the back watching. I liked it, but yeah. I know y'all- They were a little cunty. Yeah, yeah, I do recall yeah. that part. Shane was on the late show. I remember, and yeah. he had a, not a tough time, but you know, yeah, he yeah. didn't uh, <laughs> destroy the way, no the way the way that I'm, the way that I'm used to see him doing. He didn't do the way I'm used to see him doing. No, no, I agree. Yeah, that late show was was weird for sure. Yeah. So, but that first show, holy very, shit, man, so fun. It felt like it family, nice. you know, and it was just people watching. It was just really, really cool. Yeah, everybody cool. I show the special to, they're like, it's so funny. It's so sad. This guy's gonna die in four months. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. He's you know, we had such a nice week. No, no offense. We had such a nice week just with Lizzie Cassidy last week, just being positive. <laughs> you know, we were zinging, we were riffing, we were, <laughs> we were having our back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> she kicked our ass. She yeah. kicked the shit out of you us. did a Royal Rumble. She took our heads and smashed them together <laughs> and said, now it's my podcast. So Lizzie will be getting 10% of the show revenue. Now yeah. we got to we gotta give her a little taste yeah. because she smashed our heads. Heads. Oh, also, so then I sh I shared yours on my story, right? And also, Zany Chicago, April third. Get your tickets, microscene.com. And then, com. and then I realized you didn't see my uh, me my post about it, right? Like you know how you could view it on the stories. I'm getting a lot. So well, I no, also don't. But see, I don't share because I don't want my entire Instagram story to be like. This is great. How much this is great. Love me. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to do that I'm on their trying birthdays, to be and paint. you can't even do that for something you're supposed to promote. <laughs> <laughs> people will post about themselves on their. Birthdays. I don't want people to look at my Instagram story and go, "All right, we get it." Yeah, you know. Well, so then I was like, "Ah, damn, he didn't see it." And mm -hmm. then, for some, I don't know why, I started clicking and clicking, mm -hmm. and I. At some point in my life, I blocked you from seeing my stories. Oh, okay. So you couldn't see it because you're blocked from my story. I wonder why that was. So I unblocked you. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't. I, I never like went out with your kid without your knowledge. I was like posting pictures with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but you're unblocked now, and uh, yeah, you're in my bio. I did that reason. I looked at the people that I had blocked from st that I, whose stories I don't see. I was shocked at who I had blocked. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "All right." I can start watching these, these gals' <laughs> stories again. <laughs> <laughs> these bros are all right with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's all right. <laughs> We're getting used to the new setup. We got chairs now instead of desk. But no, man, so now funny. You, now you guys can and, see all our fupas. And the people want <laughs> more, which is even more important than that. You know? Yeah. So oh, just, yeah. Just hell yeah. For, for all all the boys, dude, for you, mm -hmm. for Soder. It's good. It's good stuff. It's a good time to be, uh, I guess, white men are back. Well, to you know? be funny, it yeah. really, like, um, a few of you guys specifically, it's like, oh, man, funny guys can put things out there and people will watch it. And Looked other rough funny people there. will have their backs, you yeah. know. Yeah, it was rough for funny people for a minute. It got, yeah. it got weird. It got weird. Yeah, maybe it's still weird, but we're just in our, in our own little pocket, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's very cool to see. Mm -hmm. you, so congrats. <clears throat> you guys think this is better than the table? People. Oh, hell oh yeah. you're, you're going to have a complaint about the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they don't like to see my chicken legs. I don't know. <laughs> Sean, I don't did you spread the word in Europe of my special? 
I didn't mention it to anybody. Damn. No, no one in, in the red light district right. got to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys. I, when so I was what there. you want? Uh, you have anything to promote before they, <laughs> <laughs> before they give Sean a little HJ? She goes, "You want to promote anything? Did your friend do, do you anything have promo lately? code at all for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's free. Oh, that was <laughs> the promo code. <laughs> it's just the yeah, yeah. How was yeah? What did you do? How was Europe? It was great. I was in southern France. Yeah, to Carcassonne, Toulouse. Um, uh, where else? Lemu. Mm -hmm. I was in London for like a layover. Like I got a seven hour layover in London on the way back. Mm. And it was cool. Like I tried to find uh, the East India Company because, you know, we did that episode about the opium war. Yeah. I'm, I'm very fascinated about it. And the book that I read about it, they talked about there's a building for the East India Company from like the 1700s in London where, you know, I mean, opium was just part of their business. But, you know, they would grow it in, in India, British occupied India. Um, so I, I became very fascinated with uh, with the building because there's like we have drawings of it and I tried to go see it in London, but they knocked the thing down and they replaced it with Lloyd's of London, the insurance company. They have this like giant fucking tower that looks like uh, like a Final Fantasy VII like building. Yeah, it's just got all these like pipes and stuff it's coming dystopian. out. It's dystopian. It. It, it is very dystopian. Yeah, I, I posted it on my Instagram, but it's. Um, the tower, and they have a sign that like warns people don't climb it because I guess mm -hmm. you know people do. But it, it was interesting because it's like they knocked it down, and that was the site of the former East India Company building. And there's just like no plaque, no nothing to like let you know this was there. Mm -hmm. And I just found it so interesting because it's like London, like you know, it's like Miami. So much of the city is built with drug money, and this is over centuries. And they um, they would just rather pretend that didn't happen, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, you know, it's just like the whole London skyline, you know, these like all these like, I mean, it's like New York, all these kind of big glass buildings and such. And it's it's not just like opium or like Lloyd's of London, the insurance company, for example. They uh, they insured a lot of the ships that that sold opium, but they also insured the slave ships like so much of that money. You know, it just gets passed down from generation to generation. But the point is, it's not like the past of London. It's still the present because London is the number one hub in the world for drug money laundering. And that was very interesting when Joe Biden pulled out of Afghanistan. You saw, like, the British Parliament voted to condemn him and stuff. Like, it was a big freakout in the United Kingdom. And that's just because they were, like, panicking because Afghanistan was the major heroin source. And that was where a lot of the money that built all those huge buildings in London came from was just laundering that drug money. And they were wondering where, where the next money hit would come from. And then it turned out, you know, Ukraine war and, and now Israel and stuff. Interesting. So they're laundering drug money through Ukraine? Uh, well, I, I think the weapons and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Though I'm sure, like, yes, there are new... They, we're always, like, a decade behind on drugs. Uh -huh. Where it's like, you know, oh, the CIA was doing this in the 80s, and, the, you know, the CIA was doing whatever with Afghan heroin. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we don't really know who's running the fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Like okay, they they all say you know China Mex or China has the precursors and then the quote unquote Mexican cartels run it through, but yeah. the Mexican cartels are all uh, different factions are aligned with different factions of the government of Mexico and the United States. Mm -hmm. Like the United States, the CIA, DEA, whoever, always have their preferred factions of the cartels. It's all very managed. Right. Did Did you hear about Jay Z's uh, private jet? I know Diddy as well. I mean, Diddy's thing is apparently for drugs. Where it's sex trafficking, but the guy that was arrested with him, I don't know. Diddy wasn't arrested, but there was a man arrested next to him, right? Diddy's mule. Was yeah, Diddy's in, drug in, mule. Yeah, in Miami. Yeah. Yeah, in Young Miami, the woman she was like she was buying him or transporting pink cocaine. Yeah, she was like doing coke with Diddy. Yeah, I read the. Uh, little are these copious amounts? Are these like um, country amounts? The fact that the, these guys are going to other places, like I heard Jay Z's uh, private jet has been to like all these countries that are most known for uh, trafficking drugs, and so they're basically accusing him of trafficking drugs. Yeah, I read uh, uh, the Little Rod lawsuit. Well, uh, against Diddy, uh, he filed it in February. Uh, we'll link it in the description if people are curious. It's, you know, I just kind of skimmed it, but it's very fascinating. But it's like, you're talking about, like, are these small amounts? He says that uh, uh, Diddy's chief of staff, this woman KK, 
Uh, she's got a chief of staff. Yeah, he's a chief of staff. Amazing. Um, uh, she said uh, he says that she required all employees, from the butler to the chef to the housekeepers, to walk around with a pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana, gummies. These are like 100 and 250 milligrams each, um, and Tucci, a pink drug. There's a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. So basically, like all these gummies, it was important. Uh, for the defendant to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. Poppers. <laughs> well, he would just have, like, they, they have pictures of him in the lawsuit, but he would have just these pink gummies of, like, every kind of drug imaginable, mm. and everybody in, in Diddy's, like, orbit, all of his employees would always have these pouches just of drugs anytime he wanted them or whatever. Like an arcade? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm. Well, uh, damn, Diddy. And the You're toast, dude. The lawsuit also alleges he had hidden cameras over all his houses, would host these, like, freak-off parties, and had, like, a bunch of videos of, like, people engaged in homosexual sex or sex with underage girls or whatever. You saw the dude who claims to be, I don't know if he is, but he claims to be uh, his neighbor, and he was like, at three in the morning, he's like, things get weird. He's like, a bus full of kids comes at, like, three in the morning, and he's like, if I'm playing basketball and my ball rolls over there, I just leave it. <laughs> 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 I've lost 17 basketballs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's like the dog in a uh, sandlot, <laughs> but it's Puff Daddy's butthole <laughs> eating a basket <laughs> basketballs. Boom. <laughs> 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 he, he runs ass backwards around the yard <laughs> like, a, like a big dog. I lost 17 basketballs <laughs> yeah. to Diddy's ass. And he just eats anything that comes on the yard with his butt. Uh huh. Can you believe that? This is, these yeah. are in the files. Yeah. They're saying this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the court documents. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look good. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, Mr. Combs. Instead of Dobermans, he has just guys running around ass backwards. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he put like piranha teeth mm -hmm. in their butt cheeks. Mm -hmm. It's really weird, but it's all in there. Well, the nice thing is if you get in trouble, you can get on Twitter and be like, Mm -mm, I just love pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that pussy do it for me. <laughs> you couldn't do that back in the day. Yeah. You know? 50 Cent's having fun. Is he? Yeah. Is he not like Diddy? No, he hates him. Okay. A lot of these guys seem to really not like him. Yeah. Well, I remember he like threw a punch at J. Cole once. He threw a punch at Kendrick once. He, he's like a little, a little bitch, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 50 Cent is that story that uh, Diddy and him were hanging out, and Diddy was like, let me take you shopping, man. I'll pay for everything. <laughs> yeah, 50 Cent's reason for hating him was perfect. That's exactly that. <laughs> oh, he hit him because of that? Well, no, 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 no. Diddy didn't hit him. He didn't hit 50 Cent. Um, but 50 Cent was really grossed out that Diddy asked him, hey, let me Shop. take you shopping. I'll pay. Yeah. He's like, I just want you to look fresh. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and there's pictures of like Meek Mill and Diddy dressed the same uh -huh. they went shopping together. <laughs> he buys you matching outfits and shit. <laughs> there's also a video of like all of them. I think it's at MSG years ago and Diddy smacking Jay-Z's ass a bunch. Mm. And it's like 50 Cent and I think maybe Cameron. They're like looking around like, what the fuck? Like, they're uh -huh. also on stage. Like, what is happening? Illuminati <laughs> humiliation <laughs> ritual. <laughs> yeah. You wonder like, I mean, I guess... If a guy like that's gay or just like bisexual, or if it's just like something where or they're like a secret third thing, <laughs> a control thing. Yeah, I think when you're when you start like sex trafficking and you're having parties every night at three in the morning, this is like a type of psychopath that it, it goes beyond sex. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's what's so scary about it. Mm -hmm. Like, who f wants to fuck that bad? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I would assume. How does your dick even work every night? So I just think it's weirdo shit. Yeah. Like he, I think he runs around and smacks asses some nights. He can't be fucking every night. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. Like, you ever overpromise a woman, like, yeah, I'm going to fuck you all week or something? <laughs> well, and, then, and, well, and apparently and that's the do thing. do it once where, and you're just, uh, yeah, maybe so three tired. days. <laughs> and, well, he has, like, other men have sex with the women that he's with. And some of yeah. these women came forth and said, you know, they didn't want it to happen. So yeah. that's how he operates. He's one man who, like, yeah, wants yeah, to yeah. have all the sex and he can't because he's one yeah. man. Yeah. So he has an army of people people uh raping women yeah do you ever be in middle school and like before you go to bed you just like think about girls in your class and you get a little boner before you went to sleep yeah, yeah. you mean true love <laughs> yeah the you only mean time. what love was supposed to be <laughs> <laughs> you just get a boner about like a girl being sweet yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i don't even think about I mean, it's not yeah. even about sex it's just like i love her yeah and this is forever and i try to do that now you're nine i, I can't 
<laughs> I can't get hard. <laughs> For middle school girls? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to see what they look like now. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, go from there. Yeah. You know what's kind of cute is uh, or when you first like have a crush or feelings for somebody, you know, and it's kind of mutual and it's like, but you don't really know the other person yet. And I think that's kind of a nice... You fill in all the blanks. You fill in all the blanks. Yeah. And they do the same with you where it's yeah. like, that's kind of a nice fantasy you two get to have together yeah, for, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe a week or two or however long until you actually get to know the messy reality of each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's but, like me in books. Like, I love... <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea Starting of it. And then book. once I get into it, I'm like, this fucking sucks. My, my head hurts. <laughs> You're not respecting me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool having like 200 pages of a book left. <laughs> oh, go, yeah. Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. So I can't wait for all of this. You fantasize about it all day. Yeah. 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 Then you find out that she likes to use uh, metal on nonstick pans. <laughs> yeah. You get the ick. You get the ick, yeah. Um, okay, so this uh, this lawsuit. Little Rod was a, a Chicago um, producer. He was like a child prodigy. And Diddy, like in uh, August 2022, uh, Diddy calls him and has him work on his uh, most recent album, whatever it was. It was nominated for a Grammy, but um, Diddy skipped the award ceremony because of his legal problems. Uh, but so basically, uh, among so this uh, little Rod Jones, you know, he's uh, employed by Diddy. He's producing on this album. He produces a bunch of the tracks on it, and he's like, kind of like living and working with Diddy full time throughout uh, throughout the time. And so he says uh, in the lawsuit that uh, he was sexually harassed and assaulted by Combs. Uh, through uh, yeah, blah blah blah. Constant. He was the victim of constant, unsolicited, and author- unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. These events took place in L.A., New York, Florida. His anus, not his ass. <laughs> the anus is the little tiny part. It's not your ass. Well, you, for a court document, you have to say anus. No, you could say my buttocks. That's like your butt cheeks. Mm. He's saying oh, okay. anus because oh, it's, oh, like, oh, like, it's like it's more than just the crack. It's yeah, the yeah, yeah. anus, dude. He's like going inside. He's touching his anus, his bro. Anus, yeah. His chocolate starfish, bro. Yeah. It is great, like, reading these lawsuits. Anal penetration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you, you get to see, like, how the, his lawyer is translated into legalese when he goes, and I don't fuck with that gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> in this lawsuit, it says... And I was uninterested in the, <laughs> in the contact. <laughs> Our client was not enthusiastic. It says, uh, the lawsuit says, quote, as a, heterosex- as a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones <laughs> was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances and expressed his discomfort to Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Chris Christina Coram, KK. Mm. KK responded to Mr. Jones's complaint with, quote, you know, Sean will be Sean. Mm-hmm. And uh, he also says, like, uh, Diddy would just, like, get naked randomly, mm-hmm. like, in his house, and then his chief of staff, KK, should be like, okay, I'm leaving, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a piece of shit, man. Yeah. Do you think it's, like, over for him? I mean, it's... I forget that you can raid someone's house and not arrest them. Right. The raid kind of comes first. Yeah, Department of Homeland Security raided um, uh, Diddy's home in in L A. and Miami. Um, it, the related to a sex trafficking investigation. Like we don't know exactly why, but it's a federal sex trafficking investigation. His mm-hmm. jet, the love something, landed yeah. in where? Antigua, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. They thought he was on it, or we did. Twitter yeah. did. You know, I was thinking the other day, I would love to have like four houses, but have them all be in the tri-state area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you fly to all of them. Hell yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or have a jetpack or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Jetpack. I got a house in Jersey, a place in the city, a little beach house. Yeah. North Jersey, South Jersey, Manhattan. Yeah. 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 And then maybe get... like outside of Philly. <laughs> yeah. I'll do a little, yeah. get a little townhouse at, outside of Philly yeah. with guess... aluminum siding. <laughs> I don't know why. I just keep laughing about. Did you guys see that meme of Denzel Washington? And it says Denzel says to Diddy, "It's over, gay N word." <laughs> Dude, it's, they're really didn't have they're any. really having a fun. They're really having a fun time with this. I saw one that was like this N word. Diddy probably pulled a dildo shaped lever and escaped <laughs> yeah, through the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but um, no, the lawsuit was very interesting because it's like I love memes that don't take any effort. <laughs> <So great. laughs> that like people put zero effort into. Yeah, yeah I just I've been cracking up all day about it. just imagining Denzel Washington saying saying that. that. <laughs> 
It's over. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, the, uh, the lawsuit was just very interesting because it's like, and even the, the lawsuit, uh, it's in the lawsuit. It says that KK, his chief of staff, it alleges that she was the Ghislaine Maxwell to, um, to Diddy's Epstein. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he really does come across like an Epstein figure because it says that there were politicians, music industry executives, celebrities, mm -hmm. you know, all these different people coming through his place for these like freak off parties or whatever, where he had a hidden camera in every room. He was... You know, if you're doing drugs in his house, he's got video of you doing drugs. If you're fucking, you know, an underage girl or another man or whatever, he's got video of that. Like the Little Rod guy, <clears throat> he says that uh, he really admired. I heard Michael Rappaport was a popular guest at his house. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Little Rod was a, real, a big fan of the producer Stevie J. And so uh, uh, Puffy was like, yeah, if you have sex with me, like, I'll introduce you to Stevie J, and I'll get you, like, uh, a Grammy and uh, all sorts of monetary promises. But to try to make him comfortable, he, like, showed him a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom mm -hmm. that, I guess, Diddy just had from that happened in his house or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he... He's like, damn it, I didn't wear a condom. Like, if he wore a condom, he wouldn't care if the video came out. <laughs> Has anybody ever been the subject of sexual blackmail and just tested the waters and been like, I don't care, release Letterman, and it worked out, right? Letterman? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't on video. Sexual blackmail. Mm. I would not let... If a sexual I, blackmail. That that should be the name of his autobiography. That's his description. Mm. If oh. you had to describe P. Diddy, he would be a I sexual we, black male. I think we just found the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> sexual blackmail. <laughs> Write that down, Johnny, because we're going to forget. <laughs> Sean McCarthy um, says to Michael Scene, it's over, gay wop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like if I if I got caught having gay sex on video and somebody was like, now you have to do what we say, mm. I don't think I would let that, I wouldn't let that hurt anybody else or, or, um, or do anything. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't bend to their thing. I'd be like, I'd hold a press conference. I'd be like, I got caught having gay sex. They tried to blackmail me though. And if I, I will not kill myself. Yeah. I'm proud of who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I think and I'll be like, they tried to do this and this to blackmail me. That's what I, I've told it on the pod before, but that's what allegedly happened with the uh, Sukarno in Indonesia, mm -hmm. the guy who was eventually overthrown by the CIA. Mm -hmm. But he was supposedly blackmailed by the KGB mm -hmm. uh, when you know Indonesia was like a prize for both the CIA and KGB or whatever. So uh, allegedly, the KGB blackmailed him like having sex with two women or something, mm -hmm. and they said that we got video of this, and he was married at the time, and he just said, "I want a copy of the video <laughs> so we could look at it." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he was just getting pussy like all the time, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm surprised it worked. Yeah. Were the P tapes real? Remember the Donald there was rumors that Donald Trump had tapes of him peeing on people? Because mm -hmm. that would be blackmail too. Who filmed that if it is true? Well, it's, um, I don't no, know. It's well, true. it's not. Well, oh, he it's wouldn't, not true. No, my president he, wouldn't do yeah, something like do that. that. Yeah, he wouldn't do that. Yeah, he's yeah, actually yeah. a white hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Scott, if you could, I mean, I know we're having fun here, but if you could stop spreading <laughs> nasty rumors about about my president, um, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, it was alleged it happened when he was in Moscow at some hotel, or he, like, watched some prostitutes, like, pee on a bed or pee on each other or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know I'm a germaphobe. <laughs> he said, out, out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. What else is going on? Let's think. Well, just the uh, the lawsuit. I got a couple other things that just struck me. Like, just in terms of, like, how powerful Diddy was and how he, like, really was an Epstein-type figure. And, like, there was an account on Twitter. I don't know if it was actually Suge Knight, but he made the allegation that they were doing the raid, like, just to destroy evidence Diddy had of other people, uh -huh. which wouldn't shock me. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it, there's a pattern of that, like... Allegedly, the invasion of Panama, Noriega, the dictator, had a lot of uh, tapes of CIA and embassy officials with underage prostitutes or something, mm -hmm. and those were allegedly uh, destroyed during the invasion, or they were grabbed and later destroyed, as well as uh, files related to the Bank of Credit and Commerce International and stuff. But mm. we, we also talked about that on one of the CIA uh, murder journalist episodes. They were like, it's the first ever all-female SWAT team to, <laughs> to raid someone's house. Oh, but what I, what I found interesting was it's like 
what's covered in the lawsuit is just events from like 2022 to 2023 or so. Mm -hmm. And so he alleges, Little Rod, that the LAPD helped Diddy cover up a shooting. Mm -hmm. It's like a pretty uh, interesting story where he says he was like in the studio or whatever, and one of Diddy's sons came through, and this guy had, a, a, I guess, a friend or an associate with him named G. And he says Diddy, his son, and G go into the bathroom... I believe this is at uh, Diddy's studio or whatever. They go into the bathroom and he hears them arguing and then he hears gunshots and he's like freaked out. And so, you know, Diddy and his son like uh, say, you know, call an ambulance and they just like leave. Mm -hmm. And so he's, the three of them went into the bathroom together. The three of them went in the bathroom and Diddy's fr uh, son's friend or associate or whatever, who's just named G in the lawsuit, mm -hmm. he's shot. I think he probably started sucking his gun on accident. <laughs> <laughs> brought him to the bathroom. And he pulled his pants down. He started sucking and it ended up being a gun. Mm hmm. Damn. I was thinking about, okay, a guy who's like, he's suicidal, but he won't like put a gun in his mouth and kill himself because he's not with that gay <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, yeah. I'm not. Yo, yeah. pause. Yeah, dude. I'm not with that gay <laughs> shit. Uh, pull, yeah, a bullet is like cum, basically. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to, he's got to like get hit by a truck. Because <laughs> it's less gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Like okay. I said, it's true. Yeah. Okay. So um, the uh, yeah yeah. So the shooting uh, is uh, uh, Diddy and his son. One of either one of one of them shot this guy. You know, I think of the leg and the stomach or whatever. And so there's blood all over the bathroom and all that. And uh, he alleges Little Rod that the LAPD came in and they were at the scene for hours. And basically they reported it and it was reported in the news as if this guy got shot outside of the studio, not inside the bathroom. Mm. Uh, like the LAPD went along with this cover up, mm. which is just very interesting because it's like, yeah, that's a lot of power. And that's kind of like Jeffrey Epstein level power. Uh, yeah. So he he talks about uh, Diddy's head of security it was, a, it was a guy named uh, Fahim Muhammad. And uh, <clears throat> just from the lawsuit, Mr. Jones was terrified of Mr. Combs. He felt like he could not tell him no. Combs consistently made it clear he had immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Mr. Combs made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Uh, Mr. Combs always instructed his, ca his staff to contact Mr. Muhammad if they ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Um, upon information and belief, Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot in the, uh, in the studio. The LAPD was in the studio and witnessed blood in the restroom. They went ahead with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections with law enforcement. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just, uh, yeah, the LAPD spent hours in the, in the studio after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests. Uh, Mr. Jones and the witnesses, uh, witnessed the LAPD in the restroom pictures above, and yet the no arrests were were made. And, you know, it's just like he has photographs in the lawsuit of just this bathroom covered with blood, but also news reports at the time where guy gets shot outside of the studio, not in the bathroom of the studio. Mm. And, of course, neither Mr. Combs or his son were arrested for this shooting. It's like, I don't know, it's just very blatant police corruption of the kind that people don't think exists, or, like, non-conspiracy-minded people, let's say. They think... If the LAPD walks in and sees blood all over a bathroom, of course they're not just going to go and tell the press this guy was shot outside of the studio. But it happened in 2022. There's also just so much money out there. You know, a lot of these cops are probably just showing up to any crime scene and being like, "Who are you? How much could you give me?" Isn't there some sort of like like the police in Mexico at that point where yeah. it's like, "Yeah, we'll kind of take your shit." It, it's just wide open for corruption. And that was, you know, the Rampart scandal was Suge Knight and Death Row Records. They were hiring all these off-duty LAPD, and you know, for security or whatever. And they were paying them, like, way more than they would make as LAPD salaries. So, of course, the loyalty is going to get questioned. And a lot of these off-duty LAPD cops started becoming, you know, assa well, allegedly assassins for Suge Knight, but at least enforcers or whatever. Mm. Allegedly, one of them killed Biggie. Uh, you know, so... Yeah, I just I, I found the lawsuit very interesting. Um, Is it true that Tupac and Biggie were lovers? I've not heard that. Okay, <laughs> I've just heard it around. The you place. heard that somewhere? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like something so your funny. aunt would say at Thanksgiving. I, you know what? Not my aunt, but <laughs> Colleen Genevieve. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what a dummy! I think it, I think it was her. I'm not sure. Oh man, she's like, yeah, I've been reading a lot about the story, and apparently, Tupac. <laughs> she said Tupac. 
Tupac and Diddy were lovers, and that's why Biggie killed. Um, uh, and that's why that's why Diddy killed Biggie because he killed his boyfriend. <laughs> It's just wh whoever's like, yeah, yeah, that's funny. But there's all kinds of... I say nothing. That's just very funny. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, Diddy would, like, often brag about getting away with, like, murder and shooting people and stuff. And he, mm -hmm. I guess he talked about that shooting in 1999 with Jennifer Lopez. Mm. Oh, yeah, uh, his, like, buddy took the fall for that, right? Right. Yeah. And Shine? Am I making this Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. yeah. Uh, in the lawsuit, Little Rod says Jennifer Lopez, like, brought the gun in and gave it to Diddy, which... And Diddy used it to shoot the guy. Mm. Um... But I just found this interesting as well. Mr. Combs, like, he talked about, you know, Mr. Combs would always uh, use different tactics to m maintain control. He would make all sorts of, like, promises, like a Grammy for producer of the year for the Love Album, offered him a bunch of money, blah, blah, blah. But he would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face and inform Mr. Jones that he's willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must, in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Yeah. Very uh, disturbing guy. Damn. Yeah, imagine being Diddy's mother. <laughs> Oh, jeez, yeah. She's probably sitting pretty, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, God, I hope I don't die for my, so my son can make a point. <laughs> yeah, the shooting was at Chalice Recording Studios. Mm. But, yeah, it's just a, uh, you know, he's an Epstein-type figure, and it's very interesting when these people get exposed or whatever, because there's always another one that kind of fills the vacuum. But, but Epstein's uh, project was more political, right? Right. Though it's like, I mean, you could argue that, let's say, controlling the music industry, controlling the culture, there is a political propaganda value to that. Mm -hmm. You know, to make sure to make sure that a mortal technique can't break through the mainstream <laughs> and tell people the real truth <laughs> about Bush knocking down the towers. That's why "Dance with the Devil" never <laughs> became right. a major hit. It I never got to that <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> Billboard really? number one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how much gay sex P. Diddy had to have mm -hmm. to keep that off the charts? Well, yeah. Kanye said, you know, like, Diddy's a fed, and that part of that is being like, Kanye's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. the feds tell him specifically, you right. know, push this politician, say right, this. Right, right. If anybody else steps out of line, give them a call, explain them yeah, why they're and wrong. what has Kanye really said that's been that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Very little. Yeah, I mean, what's his craziest thing? What's Kanye's craziest take? I know. Oh, he alleged there was some sort of Jewish conspiracy, and then that fucking streamer, Destiny, mm -hmm. he went on his stream and said, yeah, I'm in, like, this group chat with uh, a bunch of people, like, uh, powerful Jewish people, like Ben Shapiro. They call themselves the Jew alumni, mm -hmm. and they paid me $30,000 to read a book about Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he, he just said that? Yeah, he said that. Is, uh, the video went around uh, 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 Twitter. Yeah. can link to that as well. Yeah. But it is funny where it's like he just he just takes so much fucking amphetamines that he mm -hmm. just spells out this stuff that would get you called an anti-Semitic conspiracy theorist. Yeah. If Destiny said, or Kanye? Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the funniest guy to end up in the trunk of a car. Destiny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just found washed up on the shore. <laughs> Yeah. Did, well, but but that's an interesting point about the the music industry. So like do, so do you think that it's about like what the messaging? Like they're trying to they want to get certain messages out there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they want to make sure they have artists that they can control. Yeah. Like celebrities, whoever. I want to make sure they want to make sure that they don't have any loose cannons. Anybody's mm -hmm. going to I mean, you know, T Tupac was under... Sean's in his basement with, like, no with like strings with, with index cards, and it's, like, the thong song to, like, the Bloodhound <laughs> Gang. <laughs> Sean's listening you to... You and me, baby, Sean's nothing but mammals. Does this mean exactly? Sean's listening. He's like, you know, if you listen to Let Me See That Thong, he says, baby, make the booty go. And, uh, but yeah, but, like, well, they just for example, they were doing COINTEL pro, pro stuff to Tupac Shakur. Like, the FBI mm -hmm. was watching him. The FBI was actively trying to promote his feuds with other rappers. Oh, but, yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, there was an FBI car behind him on the night he got shot in Vegas. Yeah. Like, they were very active in keeping an eye on this guy because he was a huge celebrity millionaire with a massive profile who mm -hmm. was, you know... Mo uh, mother was a panther and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, and w had some revolutionary themes in his music. So it's like, yeah, I do believe that. And Biggie wasn't really political at all. I guess not really. No, it was just fun songs about you know 
selling crack and right. robbing yeah. people. Seeing a beautiful woman and sucking her daddy's dick. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Tupac wasn't, I guess he wasn't on that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see the U.S. versus yeah. John Lennon? Uh, no. Oh. I did actually just start uh, getting into the Lennon, you know, like his, the Plastic Ono Band album. That's really Oh, good. it's great. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, it is. Everybody hates him, I guess, because he beat up everybody he ever said he loved. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. He's like yeah. a violent man. Yeah. You say he killed someone in another country, too, right? Like he punched a guy in the face and they think he died when they were younger. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a bummer. Yeah, a lot of those right-wingers don't like Lennon because, like, there's, you know, a conspiracy that the CIA was involved in his murder or whatever. Yeah, the U.S. versus John Lennon, it's just all about how they, the FBI was spying on him, and there's proof that they were listening to his phone conversations and all that stuff. Hmm. And uh, they had, they tried to deport him over, like, bogus reasons. Right. Yeah, they threatened him, we'll, we'll release this image and show how tiny your penis is, and then he put it on an album cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's how small my penis is. You can't even see it on the album. <laughs> Mm. I keep thinking about the okay, you know about the bridge that fell in uh, Baltimore. Yeah, where uh, the the P Diddy trafficking victims were in the <laughs> containers. <Yeah. laughs> they were trying to make a desperate escape. <laughs> I saw Aaron Berg post that he's there this weekend, mm -hmm. and he was like, "I would have been over that bridge." I just keep laughing all day about him being on that bridge when I go laughing. <laughs> but but he's in the Stuart Little car. <laughs> 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 his mink coat is just one squirrel <laughs> just one squirrel tail on his back <laughs> no oh no is this how I fucking die <laughs> what happened buddy you're Indian you're crashing the, for the bridge and the bow yeah. <laughs> yeah I asked my mom today I go what have you been hearing about it cause on Twitter, there's a lot, there's some Whoa. conspiracy. How about, how about the bridge? How about Aaron's wife shows up to the accident and she, she just sees like a mink coat floating in the harbor and she's like, ah! <laughs> 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 a, mink, a mink coat and some leather boots. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is all we found in yeah. him. A diamond encrusted uh, Star of David necklace. Yeah. 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 City yeah. officials in Baltimore are warning residents not to drink the water due to the potentially <laughs> yeah. lethal contamination yeah. of HGH. Yeah. <laughs> ba based on the items we found, unfortunately, the world's smallest pimp has passed away. <laughs> <laughs> Baltimore <laughs> Ripple <Mourn. laughs> The world's tiniest pimp. <laughs> <laughs> he got to stand on a phone book to smack booth this book to smack a bitch. Uh, Greg Geraldo said that about Cat Williams at a roast one time. Oh, yeah. He goes, Cat Williams, what a tiny little pimp. He's like, <laughs> yeah, pivot it easy when you got to stand on a pile of phone books to smack a bitch. <laughs> Oh, uh, Geraldo rules. Yeah. I saw him a few times. You ever yeah, saw wait, him? Wait, the, the Aaron Berg pimp cane is just a toothpick with a diamond on it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, I, I asked my mother what she heard about it because, you know, when you go online, there's like, oh, it's a, what they call it, black swan event? Is that what they call it? Yeah, that's the Nassim Tilly. You know those little wind-up frogs that they you put in a pool? They send that to rescue Aaron. <laughs> but they can't. <laughs> those dogs that bark and then do a backflip. <laughs> <Yeah. sighs> <laughs> the world's tiniest pimp. <laughs> but it's I like, asked my mom what she It's like did. women on the corner. They have to like take out microscopes to see the guy who's shaking them down for money. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, your mom. I, I oh assume yeah. She had uh, this is like QAnon. Is this, that the yeah, this is like, Indian? No, she doesn't go on the internet. She just watches television. So she said, "What uh -huh. the news is saying is that uh, the Indians need to pay for it. <laughs> 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 that they need to pay for the bridge. Uh -huh. <laughs> they need to pay for whatever issues the country deals with because of this. Okay. Uh, but that it should be coming from in now. Was it an Indian ship? I know there's Indian no. men inside of it. Uh, yeah, the crew was like 22 Indians, and, but I guess the captain was Ukrainian or whatever. Mm. Um, wow, is, first first the theater in Russia. This is the MV Dolly, 
merchant vessel Dolly. It was a container ship completed in 2015. Hmm. Uh, it's flagged in Singapore, but it's chartered by a Danish shipping company, uh, Marsk. Uh, chartered is it's run by, I forget, it's owned by some other company. But all these, like, all the companies, or most of them that own, like, shipping containers, they're all, like, black box LLCs mm -hmm. because, of course, you know, drugs and people end up getting moved on these things. I heard the ship ha was carrying a big shipment of uh, starter jackets. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's flagged in Singapore, and they all flag it. That was nothing. They all flag it in, in random countries so they can abuse their workforce and you know break labor laws and everything. Mm -hmm. But this was the Francis Scott Key Bridge mm -hmm. in Baltimore. It collapsed. It was mm -hmm. built in the seventies. You've been on it. We've all been on it. Wait, yeah. I think I think Anthony Kumi tweeted something like, "Yeah, they yeah they're gonna." They they knock down the bridge. He's like, it makes you wonder what they're gonna name it now to to represent the town more, the city of Baltimore. Like, yeah, Anthony, they're gonna name it the Al Sharpton Rape White Women Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they knock down the bridge so they could re just so they could rename it. <laughs> so they could rename it Fifty Cent Bridge. <laughs> that was the other great one. It's like. This is the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and they're like, this wasn't an accident. That's <laughs> yeah. the guy who, who wrote the Star Spangled Star Banner. Banner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got to decipher these lyrics now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. I guess that's like the only power that you have in, in this country, though, right? Just run a shipping container you, to a bridge. <laughs> no, I mean, you get to like, <laughs> you get you get to like maybe harass a, a congressperson on the street mm. and invent conspiracy theories yeah and maybe if you're lucky you get to do it with your friends and get and have a patreon <laughs> <laughs> well it's crazy you We're know like exercising our power right now it's crazy like how political discourse is has changed now that you have like kind of a test b test conspiracy theories mm -hmm. where you have the ones the democrats believe where it's like vladimir putin yeah. sh hit the power yeah. to you know sabotage our infrastructure or whatever yeah and then you know you have the much more fun ones the republicans believe yeah. it's like <laughs> child traffickers <laughs> in like you know the number three is very important and you mm -hmm. know these sort of rituals mm -hmm. um but yeah I, I just think it's interesting where like they're just flooding the zone with so much bullshit and now they're bringing back Guys, you know, like we were talking about Lucas, what is his name? K oh, yes, yeah, Dick know. Face, yeah. yeah. He's like some anti Semite. There's like a bunch of these guys on Twitter now who are just like posting Hitler videos. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, with AI, we can hear him in English. And it turns out we've been lied to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Which, uh, it all pretends very uh, fun times for political discourse in this country. Mm -hmm. Just people hating each other and talking back to each other and all living in their own realities without any kind of common set of facts at all. Oh, yeah. But when the the mall attack happened in Russia, the mall... They're going to name it the Interracial there. Baby Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the Interracial Baby Bridge? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the it's, it's gonna be called the bridge is gonna be named, it's gonna be called Deontay the interracial baby. <laughs> Dude, that's the new Dominic the Don We need a new like yeah. Christmas figure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're gonna name it the the tiger. Oh. They're gonna name it the Tiger Woods, but for sleeping with white women, not for playing golf bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I did know a girl in Jersey. She uh, she didn't know who her kid's father was. It, mm. it was either a guy named Dion or a guy named Dante. Mm. So she named her baby Deontay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. You know what I read? Uh, is statistically, like uh, guys raising kids who are not their own without knowing it mm -hmm. it's actually pretty rare it's like by you know these surveys or whatever most countries it's oh, only yeah. like around one percent uh -huh. so like one in every hundred guys yeah. will be raising a kid without knowing his wife cheated on him and you know it's not biologically his kid one, yeah one percent except i think in england it's something like one to four percent oh yeah <laughs> or the united <laughs> kingdom and it's okay. so much smaller than everywhere else is yeah. that true D to to like to the size of an actual map, the UK is very small, right? It's pretty small. Yeah, country, yeah. Mm. Bunch of weirdos. Yeah. When my kid came out, I was convinced that he wasn't mine because he's blonde. I looked at him. I said, "He doesn't look anything like me." Yeah. He's blonde. He's handsome. He's handsome. Yeah. He's got a a, a proportional penis size to the rest of his body. <laughs> he's got an average 
<laughs> <It's> dick size. <laughs> They're like, oh, pretty average dick size. I go, what the fuck you been doing? <laughs> that would happen on Maury sometimes. He'd be like, oh, yeah? his penis is tiny, Maury. <laughs> He'd be like, he's two months he <laughs> Oh, man. <yeah, that's> <laughs> But yeah, they shut down the port of Baltimore. It's going to cost about fifteen million a day in economic activity. Wow. Yeah, and how quick can you build a bridge, especially like that? Well, not with DEI. We can't <laughs> build a bridge anymore. <laughs> That's yeah. They were all talking about ba- uh, Baltimore's DEI mayor. I heard and the it's just a black dude. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. He's like a young, healthy black man, and they're like, "What? They hired a kid?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I heard the con- the company that's going to get the vi- the contract is um, it's called Donetta's Construction. <laughs> <laughs> the construction company's bidding. The company that 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 is getting the contract to rebuild the bridge. <laughs> Lashonda's Construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be called Lashonda and Dwayne's Construction. It, only construction guys died, it's right? It's going to get so much worse. We should just, like... Yeah, they... If we just, like, call up or text Anthony Cumia this stuff, like, uh-huh. it's real, and uh-huh. just see if he'll post it. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to believe this. <laughs> they hired LaShonda and Dwayne's construction uh-huh. company <laughs> to build the Tiger Woods It's Good That He Fucks White Women Bridge. <laughs> It's called Talking in the Movie LLC. (laughs) That's the construction company. (laughs) I'm trying to think of more specific stereotypes. They gave this contract to Our Smoke Alarm is Chirping LLC. (laughs) All the the, the contract has to be done over FaceTime on the bus. (laughs) God damn it. Yeah, so uh, so just one stipulation. Uh, we only negotiate. <laughs> the only it's all done on T-Mobile sidekicks. <laughs> the, the whole uh, the whole bridge. This is this bit is you know what people are imagining, what bad people yeah, are imagining. This is satire. It is weird that, that you can just be racist now. Yeah, you know. Great, we're back. Yeah, isn't but that, I don't want to. Yeah, Shmuley but come on, guy, you're like, talking to a guy who uh, is is raising a. <laughs> yeah, he's dating Candace Owens now. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> Candace Owens is coming over for Easter. Very excited. She was fired for. We, sure, we, right? we don't know. I mean, she yeah. was fired for being anti-Israel. Yeah. The Daily Wire is, you know, a, a Zionist outlet, Zionist media, Zionist-controlled media, mm-hmm. as we're not allowed to say. But that Rabbi Shmuley guy is very interesting. Where like. It is somehow when you speak to him, it is like he is like he is such everything that's you would be anti Semitic for hating. Like, yeah. it's, I can't explain what he is. Uh huh. He's very interesting. He's a guy who I honestly believe is like 100% some part of the Jeffrey Epstein, like pedophile blackmail orbit. You know, mm-hmm. maybe not like direct connections with Epstein, mm-hmm. but I just 100% believe this guy's like so involved in Israeli blackmail of U.S. Yeah. politics that he thinks he's untouchable. Uh-huh. And he's so like he's an just X-Man. Like, like, his superpower is you actually are anti-Semitic when you talk to him. <laughs> like, yeah, like, he makes you anti-Semitic. Yeah, he's yeah. like Beast or something. He's yeah. like this little troll man. Because think of all the all the Jewish people that you ended up, that you grew up, like, watching or, or consuming their work. Like, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner. Hmm. Woody Allen's a bad example, but I mean, I don't know, just like everybody, Jerry Seinfeld. Probably everybody. Why is there, I can't think of a single, I can't think of a single reason to dislike Jewish people. Yeah, no, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Except, well, you know, the <clears throat> ritual sacrifice of Goyan babies. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah, but if they can make blazing saddles, you know, that's, <laughs> I guess that's the trade off that you um but do you think it's part of the 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 zionist project to like make just you maybe it's part maybe maybe the whole project is like be so annoying that people don't like jews i think they've just really overplayed their hand yeah like you know there's actually a poll today is the majority of americans are opposed to israel's war in gaza now Mm -hmm. like at the start of it, of course, you know, October, it was different, but now it's 53, I think, percent of Americans are opposed, 30-some it's support. Still really, it's still pretty low. 
Yeah, I mean... But 37 support. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a third support. The majority of this country is against it. Yeah. Can Israel cancel their trip here or something? Yeah. Because of the Rafa shit? Because uh, Joe Biden didn't veto a UN Security Council resolution, which calls for an immediate ceasefire and the release of hostages, but they didn't veto it, but then they said it's not binding which is, that's not how Security Council resolutions work. I love when they throw these little temper tantrums. They're like, fine, you know what? We don't need you. We'll defend ourselves on our own. You go, well, good luck. Right. And, of course, the Israelis are coming here and they're asking for, you know, more F-16s and everything else. It's just like, if if the U.S. tomorrow stopped supplying Israel with weapons, they would immediately have to negotiate. Because yeah. they would get fucked up by, you know, Leb- Hezbollah on Lebanon uh-huh. as one example. Mm-hmm. And, well, once we stop doing a thing like that, it kind of gives permission for these countries to be like, see, you were being monsters. Or What do you mean? I don't know. Like, okay, so the attacks in Russia, because we barely talked about them, right? Yeah. The terrorist attacks that, like, Russia is obviously kind of like, yeah, they say they're ISIS, but we're looking into it is sort of the idea. Yeah. When that shit first happened, weren't you like, okay, this is a terrorist attack, and they're going to pull a, well, now we're going ape shit on Ukraine, even though they're going really hard in Ukraine, Mm -hmm. just like Israel was attacked on October 7th, and now apparently everything's fair game according to the U.S., because we're not stopping them, so if they go hard in Ukraine, it's like, you can't stop us, you're not stopping Israel, we both had terrorist attacks. Yeah, I mean... You know, the the Russia thing, I don't have as much solid evidence on. The Israel thing, I wrote a substack, seanpmccarthy.substack.com. But it talks about, like, they had all sorts of warnings that this thing was going to happen. Israel did. And they moved a bunch of troops off of the border with Gaza. They moved them to the West Bank. And, you know, even a week in advance, um, <clears throat> like, security people, people who were just in the area, were all kind of warned that this was going to happen. It was like, there are just all sorts of these, uh, there's a whistleblower who um, did security for the, uh, the Nova Festival. Mm-hmm. And he says that one of his IDF buddies told him something bad was going to happen, like, on October 7th. And he said he couldn't be more specific. And he asked him, like, and this guy, the security, uh, the head of the Nova security, he became whistle, a whistleblower after. He got, like, shot in the leg. He survived, but he was there on October 7th. He was in a hospital. He calls up his IDF buddy, and he goes, like, what exactly were you warning me about with this thing, like, something bad's going to happen? And he says, well, they told us that Hamas was going to attack and take over villages, but they said we couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't be specific. I couldn't tell you anything specific. And it's just, like... And that's not the only example. And again, this is in my Substack. There's a link to this guy's description of it. But it's just like there's so much evidence of that. And you look at every policy goal Israel ever wanted, they're getting right now. It makes a lot of sense that they would, at least to some degree, allow this to happen. With Russia, that's what the liberals all say is that, you know, Putin did this as a false flag. Putin allowed this to happen to... Uh, They think he's going to try to mobilize a bunch more people. And, you know, I guess if you have a terrorist attack, it is helpful to kind of get the country to rally around the flag. I mean, certainly that's what happened with 9-11. But I I don't have evidence one way or the other. Though uh, Seth Harp is a great journalist who's written about, um, for Rolling Stone, about Fort Bragg or now Fort Liberty and all the drug trafficking and child rape and stuff that all these special forces soldiers get up to. A bunch of special forces soldiers have been murdered you know, this is like clearly within the special forces community, there's like drug wars where people get killed over drug and weapons trafficking or possibly child trafficking. We, we don't know the full details. But Seth Harp, he found um, the leader of ISIS-K, which is the group that has claimed responsibility for this. He was in Afghanistan. He was a contractor for the U.S. at Bagram Air Force Base. The U.S. was paying the head of ISIS-K money. Then he went on to be security head for, like, some uh, Afghani drug lord who was a CIA proxy. And he apparently had, uh, like, a license um, to move weapons within Afghanistan. And the kind of license that you would only have that NATO would have to approve of because the then Afghan government would have given it to him. So it's like this is a guy who was, like, very plugged into the U.S. government in Afghanistan. And suddenly he's the head of ISIS-K. And they seem to mostly attack U.S. geopolitical enemies. Yeah, which I would, I always assumed the narrative on ISIS is they're only attacking us and our allies. Turns out it's the opposite. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've obviously done attacks uh, 
against you, the U.S. and such. Uh, I, I think like ISIS K is uh, ISIS K is different from ISIS itself, and there are these all these different affiliate Islamic groups. But ISIS K specifically, it's like NWO, very, and they got like Wolf Pack and shit, and mm-hmm. they got like too many groups. <laughs> LW Latin World Order, and right. like really, Rey Mysterio doesn't have a mask. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I guess we'll see what happens with Baltimore, how long it takes them to rebuild the bridge. Yeah, and what they name it. Get your comments in and, <laughs> you know, your guess is as good as ours, everybody. And check out Mike's special. It is absolutely phenomenal. Tell your friends. Just send it to your, it's like, phenomenal. family. It's, it's phenomenal. That, yeah, it's whatever. It's, it's how uh, I would spell it. <laughs> uh, it's so fucking good. So yeah, send it to your friends and go check this out. Thanks, because they'll be happy that that you did. Yeah, we got to get it to 100k so that I can post that picture of Sammy Sosa that looks like Mike on Twitter <laughs> and say I want to congratulate my friend Mike for hitting 100k views on his special. Yeah, so get us to 100k, please. Um, yeah, leave a comment. And uh, I don't know, guys. Any anything else before we? Uh, God, my knees are fucked up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I could talk about France on the Patreon. I don't even have that much. I just like saw some yeah. beautiful. I saw some beautiful churches. You know, that is kind of what you do in Europe. It seems like. Yeah, it's like. I mean, it is cool. You see all these buildings that are like from the 1200s, mm-hmm. and there's like in Carcassonne, there's this church there. And you go, wow, they don't have this in of the other countries. There's this church in Carcassonne. They had uh, stained glass. Is that how you feel? Were you like celebrating Western values? That's right. I was... <laughs> He's going back to the hostel every night and jacking off, thinking about Western values. <laughs> it was on my Anthony Cumia shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where'd you stay? Uh, I had a friend in Lemu. Nice. So I could crash there. Nice. Um, well, we'll get into all that. But yeah. Over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash out for smokes. Thanks for listening, everybody. It's uh, always a, it's a fun uh, time to hang out with you on your Friday, on your commute, on your weekend, whatever it is. And uh, we thank you a lot. You make us, like I said, you make us feel rich. So we'll see you over on Patreon. Bye-bye.